Hi everyone, welcome to video 3 of chapter 3. So before we go into details of uh, designing an algorithm to solve the linear programming problem, we need to do a little review of something we have learned along the way. Namely, we want to recall a process that we have learned to solve a system of linear equations in your matrix course or in your linear algebra course. And we will revisit the step called pivoting. Let's take an example. So let's say I want to solve this 3 by 3 system of linear equations, x1, x2, x3, and I have three equations. Okay, so take a look. It's um, linear, it's all numbers times x1, some number times x2, and some number times x3 equal to numbers. Okay, so we, we know how to solve this. There are various ways of doing it, but I would like to recall one special process called pivoting. So you have noticed that I put this term x1 in red. So this is in red is because I want to do the following. I want to pivot with x1 in equation 1, meaning this term here. So the goal of the pivoting process is the following. I want to remove the x1 terms in the other equations. So if I pivot here in equation 1, then I want to do the manipulation such that in equation 2 and in equation 3, the term x1 should be gone, basically with zero coefficient. Okay, And also I want to make this term, on the, the x1 that you are pivoting in this equation, with coefficient 1. Okay, so that's the goal. There are two goals, okay. Remove it in the other equations and make the coefficient 1 in the equation you are pivoting. Okay, so let's look at the details. We see that the x1 term here is already with the coefficient 1. That part is done. We don't need to do anything. Now we need to take care of removing the x1 term into equation 2 and 3. So how can we remove x1 term in equation 2? Well, we see that we have a coefficient 2 here in front of x1. So if we take the first equation, multiply it by negative 2, and then add this on top of equation 2, then the negative 2x1 and the positive 2x1 will cancel, and this term will be gone. All right? So that's what I wrote here. Equation 1 multiplied by negative 2 and add it on top of equation 2, and we replace the equation 2 with this new one. Okay. And then to remove the x1 in equation 3, we could simply multiply the first equation with minus 1 and add on top, and then x1 will be gone. So equation 1 times minus 1, add on 3, and replace 3 with that. Okay, so if we do that, then what will we have? Okay, so by multiplying with negative 2, I have negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, then I get negative 2, 3, is positive 1, here's negative 8, 7, negative 1, and that's the new equation 2. And then for equation 3, I will have, this will be cancelled, that will be negative 2, and you get negative 1, you get negative 1, add on 4, you get 3, and then you get negative 4, add on 6, and you get 2. Okay, so if uh, I am talking too fast, then you can pause the video and work out the details by yourself. Okay, so 
after the first pivoting step, this is what we have. So I repeated the equation, the systems earlier, and now I put the red here. X2 in equation 2 becomes red. Why? Well, because that's the second step now. Now I choose, see the word choose, choose to pivot with this x2 in the second equation. This means I have two goals. First is I want to make the x2 in the other two equation disappear. So x1 should not, oh, sorry, x2 should not occur in the first equation or in the third equation. And then I want to make this coefficient to be 1 in equation 2. Okay? So let's see how we can achieve that. Okay, so here are some details. So what we will do, so, okay, how do we get rid of the x2 in equation 1? And we see that these two coefficients, 2, negative 2, are negative of each other. So if we add equation 2 on top of equation 1, then this term will be gone. And then we replace 1 with that. So 2 equation plus equation 2 plus equation 1, and replace 1 with that, okay? And then for the, and this is what we get. So we get x1 because you add 0, and then x2 here is gone, becomes 0, and then x3 plus x3, you get 2x3. And then 4 plus negative 1 is 3. And this is equation 1, the new equation 1 now. Okay, and then for equation 2, well, I would need to make this to be coefficient 1, and which is now negative 2. So I need to multiply it by negative half. Okay? And then I replace the 2 with it. Okay, so if I do that, I get x2. This becomes negative half, and this becomes positive half. And that's the new equation, too. Okay? And then for the third equation here, I want to remove x2. What I could do is... Uh, um, multiply equation 2 by negative half, so this becomes positive x2 and add on top of that, right? Basically, we can take this equation, the new x2 here, add it on top of x3 and replace x3 with it, okay? If we do that, and then we know this one will be gone, and uh, I will have a, a half, negative half plus 3, which is 2 and half, that's 5 over 2, and then equal to here is also 2 plus half, which is 5 over 2. Okay? So after the second pivoting step, I get this system here. Okay? So you might be thinking that um, once you have understood what to do, the pivoting step is rather repetitive. Okay? So hope uh, you agree with that comment. Okay, so we're almost done. So we pivoted x1 and x2 in equation 1 and 2 respectively. And we have one more to do. That is, now we have x3. We choose to pivot x3. Well, actually here we don't have a choice. We have x3 and the only equation that has not been used to pivot is equation 3. So that's what we do x3 in equation 3, that will be our pivoting point. Okay, so the goal is the same. We want to um, remove the x3 in the other two equations, number 1 and number 2, and we want to make this 1 here. Okay, so, okay, so um, we can probably see that if I multiply equation 3 by a factor 2 over 5, I get 1 here and I get 1 here. So that's this step. I do that and I replace equation 3 with that. Okay. And then I could uh, either use this one or we can stick here by just multiplying by a suitable constant. So what we can do would be, okay, if I want to remove this x3, I could take equation 3 and multiply by negative 4 over 5, and then this will be negative 2x3, and add on top, and that will be 0. And I do the same thing to the right-hand side constant. Okay? 
which actually exactly gives me 1. Okay, I'm sure you can carry out this procedure. Okay, and then for removing the x3 here, and I can take the equation 3, multiply by 1 fifth, then I get a half, and I add on top of that, and this will be gone. And 1 fifth, the half, add on top of half, and the right hand side is 1. So this is the final result. And you see that after you perform the pivoting for all the variables, and here I have three variables and three equations, and then each variable will occur to be the only term on the left-hand side and with some number on the right-hand side. Okay, So if you think of matrices, and this is like in a diagonal form, and we basically have solved the equation. Okay, so I um, hope that review was useful to refresh your memory of um, that process that we have learned probably a while ago. And then you know that's not the end of the story. We're going to utilize it. Okay, so let's make some comments. So we notice that we always say we choose to pivot which variable in which equation. So that means the sequence of this pivoting um, variables is actually a choice, right? You can make a different choice and go through them in a different way. But if the system has a solution, and that means it's a well-defined um, invertible matrix and so on and so forth, then any order, if it works, if you don't get into trouble, we'll talk about troubles along the way, if that is the case, and then any of these sequences you choose should always give you the same solution, is exactly because the solution of the whole system is unique. Okay, but let's don't dive into that because that's not what we are interested in. Recall that in the linear programming problem, we have constraints in the standard form. They are all written now as equations, equations of linear systems. Okay, I want to point out that the same procedure of pivoting can be carried out for m equations and n variables where the m and n don't match, and in particular we have n bigger than m, which means we have more variable variables than the number of equations. Okay, We can carry out the same pivoting process, and that could be useful for us to solve the LP problem. Okay, so this we'll talk about in the next video. So hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.